Commands are just one click away on the Quick Access Toolbar, and the QAT, as it's also called, always shows. When you customize it to see the commands you use the most, you're more efficient and more productive. For instance, when designing forms and reports, I love the commands to align objects – left, right, top, and bottom. The QAT also gives you a way to use commands that aren't on the ribbon, like make vertical spacing equal. Did you know that Access can distribute controls like that? Access can do lots of things. It's amazing. Hi, this is Crystal, and Strive for Peace. My business is remote programming and training. We connect and I teach you one-on-one. -on -one. So if you want to be the best and design databases that are successful for years and years and shine with your peers, let me help you get there. I've just installed Office 365 on this machine. When you open Access for the first time, the default Quick Access Toolbar, or QAT, is in the upper left. It doesn't have much on it yet, so it shares space with the title bar. So far, there are just three commands – Save, Undo, and Redo. However, the Quick Access Toolbar is a wonderful way to help you work faster and can have a lot more commands. To customize the QAT, you can click the down arrow at the end and choose more commands from the list of choices. A dialog box opens. On the left are commands you can pick from, and on the right are the commands on your QAT. Above the left list is a drop-down to choose what command set you want displayed. By default, these will be the popular commands although I'm not sure whose definition of popular they're using. You can also choose Commands Not in the Ribbon, All Commands, Macros, or Commands from Particular Ribbons. I like to change this to show All Commands. If this is your first time customizing the QAT, you might want to take an hour or so to browse through what's available. There's a lot. On the right, I click the command that I want new commands to go below. I generally add what I want below the default commands. First, I'll add a few separators to save time later from having to scroll up to the top of the list to get a separator when I want it. After positioning to the last item, I double-click the separator several times. Now I click the first separator I added and start adding new commands. Click on the left list to select it. Then when you type a letter, it jumps to the commands that start with that letter. Scroll to what you want, then double-click it. This adds it to your QAT commands. Once you're done customizing the QAT, you can export it to a file by clicking the Import-Export drop-down in the lower right, and then choosing Export All Customizations. This opens the File Save dialog box, so you can put the file where you want it. I normally change the folder and the name of the file to include the version of Access I'm using and YYMMDD to indicate the date. This time, though, I will just accept the default folder and file name since there isn't anything I care about finding later. Click the Save button to create a file that can be copied and shared. I noticed that the first time I do this, the commands disappear from the menu. Now I realize it's good to close the QAT to save it and then come back before exporting. It doesn't matter right now, though, because I'm going to import customizations from a file. Notice that before you customize the QAT, you can choose if the new QAT will be accessible for all documents or just the database that you have open. If you want the new commands to be accessible any time you use Access, then leave this set for all documents. I customized my QAT on another computer and saved customization files. 
Here are three customization files. Two are for Access and one is for Excel. I customize the QAT in all my applications. The latest one here for Access is a couple years old. And my QAT has changed since then, but importing this one will still save some time. Copy the path to the clipboard so navigating to the file will be faster. In the lower right, drop the Import Export list and choose Import Customization File, then browse to the folder where it is. If the path is on the clipboard, like it is for me right now, paste it in the file name box using Control V, press Enter to show the files, and choose the one you want. What happens if I pick a file for Excel? Let's find out. A dialog box appears asking if I want to replace all existing customizations, and I click Yes. Now Access tells me that only a customization file from Microsoft Access can be imported. Let me pick one that really is for Access. Now I choose Import again, paste my path, press Enter, and pick the latest Access customization file. Again, I click Yes to replace the existing customizations. Voila! There they are. I make the dialog box taller by clicking on the grabber handle in the lower right and dragging it down. In the first group, with the default commands, I also have Save As, which I mostly use when I've changed the design of a query and want to give it a new name. The advantage of this is that you can see what you're working on when the dialog box pops up for a new name, so it's easier to type a good one. In the next set of commands is the Relationships icon, since I use this one a lot, and icons to switch and tile windows. The next set has commands for working with queries to switch views between Design, Datasheet, and SQL. Clear the grid when I want to get information from the same tables, but different columns. When the query I'm building uses tables that are linked through ODBC, Open Database Connectivity, converting it to a pass-through will make it execute faster. This Design View command is also for forms and reports, so it's the same one as the Design View for the query. In the next set are commands to switch views for forms and reports. Then come commands to hide and unhide columns in Datasheet View, refresh records, and freeze and unfreeze columns. You'll notice that when there isn't a specific icon, Access just uses a round green circle, and you can hover over it to see what it really is. The next several commands work in form and report design. First are commands to line up selected controls to the left, right, top, and bottom. These are some of my favorites. After that are commands to make horizontal and vertical spacing equal. Then come commands to resize to the shortest or tallest one, or the narrowest or widest one. When you want controls to move together, you can group them. To move them independently, you can ungroup them. When you have controls that share space to make what is selected be on top, you can bring to front. Or, if you want to make the selection be behind everything, you can send to back. Special effect determines how control borders will appear. They can be flat, raised, sunken, etched, shadowed, or chiseled. When forms are created using the wizard, the controls are grouped into a layout, and often I want to remove that layout so individual controls can be sized and positioned. About tells you what version of Access you're using, whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit, your product ID, the session ID, license terms, and a link for other connected services. Finally, if you have embedded macros, you can convert macros to Visual Basic for the active object. This puts everything in the code behind the former report in one place, so it's easier to see what's going on. 
When you click OK, a message appears telling you that you must close and reopen the current database for the specified options to take effect. This might be true the first time you customize the QAT, but after that it seems to change right away. Now that there are so many icons on the QAT, it's good for it to have its own line. The whole thing doesn't even show. Click the double arrow right at the end to show more controls, and then click the drop down arrow at the end to show the menu, and choose Show Below the Ribbon. Since the ribbon is collapsed, the Quick Access Toolbar is displayed directly below the ribbon names. In summary, you learned about useful commands that you can add to a Quick Access Toolbar so you can work more efficiently. I actually made a database in Access for this. Amazing what Access can do when you don't see the boundaries that others who don't know it can impose. To share your QAT with others, or on another machine that you set up, you can export your customizations to a file. Then, QAT customizations can be imported. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. To download the QAT that I demonstrated, go to msaccessgurus.com, click on the Tools menu, and choose QAT. You can download either an Access 2013 or 365 version, and if you need a lower version than that, just send me an email and I'll try my best to get one up. If you're in a position to give a little, at the bottom of the page is a donate button, and I really appreciate every donation. I spend a lot of time developing things to help you, so it's really nice to get your little thank yous back. If you're building an Access application, let me help you. I can connect to you, and we work together. Let me alleviate your frustration, give you a leg up. I'd love to help you. You know your business, I know how to automate and teach so you understand. I also have extensive libraries that we can pull in as needed. Email me, training at msaccessgurus.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for joining me. Through sharing, we will all get better.